convert all the files with .js extension to .txt. So you can see this is pretty accurate in a way. I mean, this is exactly what you will do. You will loop over all the files in JS. You will move the file and remove the extension and add a .txt and just call it a day. Awesome. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to set up something known as Codex CLI on my system and walk you through how it works as well. Now, you know about GitHub Copilot, right? Which GitHub and that is eventually Microsoft developed. And it is a great AI tool which help you auto complete few things you can just write whatever you want to get done and it'll try to spit out some code it is trained on a lot of code in open source on github so it works and it is it blows minds a lot of times because it's ai powered and it can do a lot of auto completion for you similarly there's a new tool which is built on a similar technology called as codex cli so codex is the technology which powers github copilot as well so it's not technically github copilot on the cli but it's close because it's using the same underlying technology so in this video i'm going to set up codex cli on my own system and show you how this works if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so the first step i have cloned this repository on my own system so it's available under codex cli and what you have to do as a first thing is if you go to this installation.md you will see that you have to run this command to install the required packages i already run that command using this syntax because that is how it would work on my system once we do that the next thing we have to do is get a few credentials because this will be using open AI API, you're gonna need to have an open AI account. So you can go to this link, which is again specified in the documentation itself and copy a few credentials. The next thing you have to do is copy the organization ID through the same link, just a different menu location. And finally, you also have to copy the OpenAI engine ID, which you want to use. So you see what happens with this Codex engine, for example, it's trained on, it, it consists of two models as of now, and you can see like what all other differences, not in technical terms, but more in a, in a broader way. So you can use this Code Cushman engine, or you can use the Code DaVinci engine. We're gonna be using Code Cushman, so that is there. But once you have all these three things collected, then you have to go to the repository which you have cloned. Right? So let me just go ahead and combine my terminal and the screen so that it's a little easier to work with. So you can see we have already run Python. The next thing we have to do is run this scripts and go inside the scripts folder. So the scripts folder consists of this bash setup script right now. So you can either run that or you can run ZSH setup. Now I'm on Mac OS and I'm using iTerm2. So I know this works on ZSH not bash. I mean, technically it is bash, but you can see this is the bash UI, but the default interactive shell is ZSH in Mac OS now. And that is also true for item two, which, which is the terminal I'm using. So I'm going to be running ZSH setup instead of bash setup script. So let's go ahead and write source ZSH setup.sh. There we go. And now I have to paste a few things which we copied from the apps. All right, so as you can see, the OpenAI codex is now set up in my terminal and ready to go. So let me just go ahead and open a terminal instance now, make it full screen and get it to you guys over here and enlarge this a bit, right? So let's just start and let's just try to write a few things. Now, the way this works, for example, for the auto completion and the AI to work, what you have to do is start with a hash symbol, which is a comment in bash and then write whatever you want to do. So let's say if I go to codedam folder and let's say if I open codedam.com, for example, I can see that we have, let's say nextconfig.js as the file. What I can do is I can go ahead and ask, count the number of files in next.config.js and hit control G. So yeah, you can see the moment I hit control G after a few seconds, it took a few seconds, but it spit it out a command, which is pretty cool. You can see now I get 321 because this is the exact number of files. I can also write something like count the number of files ending with .js extension in this folder, hit control G, wait for it to think and spit out. And you can see, there we go. You can see this is the number of files which we have, which ends with the JS extension. Super cool. I mean, this is something which I, I might like actually use because bash sometimes get a little, or ZSH even sometimes get a little complex when you're trying to write a lot of XRGs and, and a few things. So it, it might just save you time. Of course, I would not recommend like executing random things without understanding what they do. But yeah, I mean, this would save time for you to think out the logic which you have to write in the bash script itself. All right, let's try something else as well. Convert all the files with .js extension to .txt. Let's see what this 
spits out. So you can see this is pretty accurate in a way. I mean, this is exactly what you will do. You will loop over all the files in JS. You will move the file and remove the extension and add a TXT and just call it a day. Awesome. This is amazing because now you can just write a command and run the command after verifying that you know what this command is doing is the right thing. And these are like common use cases. It's not even like, you know, something which, for example, this is something which I have encountered a bunch of times myself whenever you want to try to convert some extension to some other extension. This is useful. All right, let's try to throw another difficult thing to open AI. Let's say add a file named codedam.txt with contents as hello world in every branch of this git repository let's see how this works so you can see obviously this did not work out very well technically i would have expected a full bash script which would have added a file which would have just looped over all the branches available in this project and would have added code damn.txt and would have echoed hello world but i mean this did not work out so obviously this is not like a replacement of a developer at your company because for a developer if you who's a good developer and you say that developer something like this and that developer comes back to you with this command then obviously you will fire them <laughs> not really but you will obviously have the ability to ask them what the hell is this but here you can see there are some cases where this would fail but for the most part i mean if you're doing one liner things and simple things this is pretty cool so yeah that is all for this video super interesting technology codex gpt3 open ai they're doing amazing work like i said in another video as well i'm not a huge fan of beginner developers and even for senior developers that GitHub Copilot intervenes a lot. So I'm not a fan of that, but the technology itself is extremely amazing. And especially in cases like this, in cases of Bash, where I have to give it a prompt, it's prompt engineering, basically. I have to give it a prompt and it spits out command. This is great. I mean, my major complaint with that video was OpenAI intervening a lot in IntelliSense and Autocomplete, which bothers train of thought you who are working with as a developer. But in this case, if you're running a Bash script and if you're trying to get something done, just spit it out in English and it will spit out the code. Awesome tech, awesome work. I think this would be used a lot by me also and by other people also for increasing their productivity. So amazing work all around. I feel like, you know, AI obviously would be becoming more powerful and stronger to help developers and to help people become more productive. That is all for this one. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.